In the world of pesky domestic critters, few inspire as much fear and loathing as the bed bug. And now for the first time, researchers have uncovered clues to the creature's resilience that could help us develop ways to eradicate the blood-sucking pests from our homes. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ's Lee Holtz. Lee, thank you so much for being with us. Really interesting stuff. Is this the first time researchers have looked at the entire genome of the bed bug? That's absolutely right. A team of 108 researchers from the American Museum of Natural History, Weill Cornell Medical College, University of Cincinnati, and a dozen other places have for the first time walked through all 36,000 some genes that are responsible for the um, prickly irritating, <laughs> yes. pesky lifestyle yes. of these tiny, tiny creatures. Well, what did they find then is sort of the secret to their resilience? Well, a variety of things. They, uh, it's all you know, still preliminary, but they found at least uh, three large clusters of genes that are responsible apparently for their resistance to very common insecticides. And they also found genes that uh, in the bed bugs that infest us in particular, thicken their skins, which again make them uh, wow. uh, uh, more immune to the chemicals that we use to eradicate them. And then uh, an entirely separate group just recently found that the newest pesticides, I mean, are becoming ineffective because bed bugs are so quick to adapt. Amazing. And now give us a, a brief history, if you would, of the bed bug. I mean, it has been eating human blood or drinking human blood for centuries, hasn't it? Oh, these are the tiniest and most infamous of the real vampires of the world. Um, People have been scratching bed bug bites at least as long ago as ancient Egypt. I mean, we know Amazing. because of references, the Romans, um, 11th century Europe. Uh, uh, oddly, they were all but eradicated by around the Second World War with the use of DDT and other insecticides. But, you know, since the mid 90s, uh, worldwide, they have just rebounded. And the bed bugs that they find today can actually withstand a, a dose of those older pesticides like a thousand times stronger than what would have been lethal just a few decades Amazing. ago. Amazing. And does the, the, has the bed bug then evolved to survive solely on human blood? Yes, there are about 90 species of bed bugs actually. Um, but only one of them uh, has, how shall I say, um, co-evolved with us. Right. And uh, yeah, they, they, they live just on human blood. Not even pets or animals, no, just humans. No, human. The, others, the others do. Right. But in fact, they suspect that uh, originally this particular species that inhabit us, um, they call us home, uh, <laughs> Also, uh, originally infested bats oh, that make you feel much better about the whole worse. thing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so what but what is amazing about this, just to linger on this for a yeah. second, uh, one of the very clever things that these scientists did is in addition to actually just sort of mapping and locating the molecular uh, biology of the genome, they also looked at how active these genes became at different points in the creature's life cycle. And what they found was when the infant bed bug, when the nymph stage of the bed bug gets its very first uh, human blood meal, that that triggers a cascade of genetic activity that's like the most powerful thing in that creature's entire life. It activates more genes than are responsible for sex in the bed bug, for, for distinguishing males and females, those biological changes. It's so like could the key 20 then of all their genes. be to get them before they have that initial first meal? I can see that you have a future as a bed bug biologist because <laughs> oh that's goodness. exactly what um, they're starting to think about. They've known for a long time that these uh, insects are, you know, very resistant to chemicals, but if you could catch them at the right stage of this intricate life cycle, mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to intervene and uh, knock them out without spreading poisons through the environment, which of course is another issue. Absolutely, and they even found that the bed bugs in different regions differ from each other. The Queen's bed bugs are different from those in Brooklyn, yes, is that one of right? Yes, one of the clever things they did is that taking advantage of some uh, uh, work that the people at Cornell had done, mapping kind of the genetic diversity of bacteria and things in New York City, um, they were able to kind of look at the diversity of bed bugs from borough to borough. And what they found was that yeah. each district has got a, a, a strain, a breed of bed bugs that's just slightly different than the other. Just like New Yorkers. Just like New Yorkers. But in this case, this is based on uh, who the bed bugs are biting. Oh, my goodness, Lee. Well, thank you so much for that. We can only hope that all of this research <laughs> is going to lead us somewhere that will help get them out of our homes. Yeah, that's my hope, too. <laughs> yeah. Lee, thank you so much for that.